uncomfortable this is for me, you. Bloody hell, you could get off my knee and get let me turn the camera on. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Lockman Diggers. Well, I've got a few videos to show you today. However, I'm a bit distracted at the moment because I'm watching all these magpies mobbing um, a bloody buzzard in the trees over on the, the back end of the allotments. And I can't really um, run out with the camera because it's on my knee. And uh, I'll throw her off my knee, she's only going to sulk. Uh, and this is a, probably about the 15th take I've done here. Uh, each time I turn the camera off and I've got to reach over and turn it, and she won't help, she won't get off my bloody knees while I'm doing it, so I'm sort of leaning over, struggling. Anyway, hopefully the buzzards managed to get away from all the magpies, but there must be about 15 magpies, 20 magpies over there, and they're all sort of in the, the bushes. I just thought Maggie's not with them, otherwise she'd probably end up being a meal. <laughs> A lot of birds of praise on this lot on this allotment. So I tell you, it's amazing. Um, we've got vulcans, uh, we've got buzzards, we've got kestrels, uh, we've got buzzards. Got them all, haven't we, boy babes? Yeah, we have, haven't we? Yeah, we've got them all. Anyway, I've got a few videos to show you today. A few clips, bit of a giggle. Um, Going to be just doing some broad beans in the, the greenhouse later. Thanks, Buttercup. She uh, she helps. Stop wagging the tail. She let one go before. Whew, good God, it stripped the lining off my lungs, I think. Uh, that's going to take me a week to recover. Uh, anyway, um, so what we're going to show you today is me... Well, let me start off with a story first, a, a little story. About four months ago, um, we took a load of elephant garlic out of the back bed as you know and we and we threw a load of um, sweet corn into that bed it was a dwarf variety I shoved it in and I thought you know it takes his chances if it grows it grows it doesn't it doesn't well it grew and it matured and it was really really nice we had a lo another um, lot of corn which had, uh, had grown some beautiful corn perfectly developed wonderful we beat the squiddles um, squiddles didn't get it Unfortunately, they got all my neighbours. Squiddles got a couple of them, but not all. Anyway, we got, took them home. Girls woofed them down. They loved them. So, have you done any more? I says, well, no. However, I did start some more off. And I threw them in and left them. Anyway, um, we had a frost about a week or so ago, and it, it damaged uh, it damaged the corn. And I didn't think they were going to grow any more. They weren't getting any bigger. However. Silly bugger here, I didn't realise. Well, I did I did know there was um, dwarf corn, but I forgot there were dwarf corn. I thought there were the bigger corn. Anyway, they got, they got to a certain size. Anyway, I, I, I took a couple off and looked at them. Just pulled them apart. About this big. Perfectly developed yellow, but there was only small. I thought, oh, these are not very good. Threw them into chickens. Chickens loved a couple of them. Then I got sidetracked by doing the front part of the plot. I'm glad I got sidetracked, really, because... Um, about four or five days ago, uh, Mrs. There, she's in the kitchen doing a got a stir fry, got these small corn, and she's make chicken and all this, that, and the other. And um, I said, Where'd you get them from? She says, Well, I've been waiting for you to bring them corn, what you got on the allotment. So you said you've uh, done some small uh, miniature corn. I said, I realised what they were, I forgot all about it, there was miniature ones. I said, oh, all right, I'm gone. So I might have some of them tomorrow. So this is, we're going to jump onto the, the video now where I'm taking the corn out and we're having a look at it and uh, we end up with a carrier bag of this stuff. <laughs> so I saved it from the chickens and I've uh, saved my reputation only because I noticed uh, she was, um, using these small corn. If I wouldn't have seen that, the chickens would have had all the corn, guys. Anyway, here's me lifting the corn out. You're going to see me, uh, you see see what we've got at the end of it. We're tidying the bed up, but we're going to be coming back to that bed. So right we're going to this. take this um, dwarf corn out of here. Um, I have been giving the, the girls some of it. Turns out it's a, it's a smaller corn, what you get in the supermarkets. And I've been, <laughs> I've been feeding the chickens it. <laughs> it's ready for. You see how all the husks are all brown. Uh, 
See when they go black like that, that says they're ready, but these are a dwarf variety and I've been I've been giving them the bloody chickens anyway. I'm gonna throw all the cobs in there and I'm gonna pull all the plants out. I know you're gonna say you should have leave the, the roots in for the nitrogen, but um like I say the bed's full of uh, chicken manure. I don't need any more uh fertilizers. Anyway, we're just gonna clear it all out now so Swing the camera around so I can see it's in focus. The problem I've got with this camera, sometimes it doesn't focus properly and it goes all blurry. Well, there you go guys, all the corn's out, in that bucket there's some corn, we've been giving the chickens this corn um, for the last couple of weeks, I realised it's a bloody uh, dwarf corn, he's not wrong with it, it was ready for, <laughs> ready for eating so I'm going to take that home, let the girls do it, uh, have a stir fry, there's Mike <laughs> from putting along he just uh, come over, she said to me, uh, I've done about six wheelbarrows of horse on you and six wheelbarrows of wood chip from the top up, up the allotments up there. He's got to take it from the top all the way over to the, where the houses are over there. Uh, he's done 12 loads, he's absolutely shattered. So, I was saying it, it took about 30 loads to do that. 30 wheelbarrows to do the front part of the plot. But then again, I cheated, he had big sacks, so I filled each sack, you get about six wheelbarrows in each sack, so I made it easy for myself. Anyway, there's the corn, what are the, the tops, going to compost that now. We'll come back to this bed later on in the week, and um, I'll put some more of that elephant garlic in. I've got a pile of elephant garlic there to give away, so... Uh, I give uh, give a few people on the allotment um, who watch the videos. Said if you want some, come and help yourself. But that 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 soil there, honest God, guys, I don't even need a trowel to dig down. It's it's perfect. Uh, in, in fact, let me quickly show you. Um, Worms everywhere. So yeah, we don't even even don't even need to hold that. The ground's uh, perfect. Right, we'll we'll come back to this. I get some blood fish and bone, chuck it in, and we'll throw some more garlic and some um, some shallots in there. I'm just going to
Do one more. I lied. Do another one. So them small corn that you buy in the supermarket, which costs an extraordinary amount of money, that's what these are. And uh, for the last two weeks, the chickens have been having a, having a meal. I've been throwing these in like nobody's tomorrow. It was only when I realised what I was doing. Oh well. Here's me thinking that this corn was uh, useless, <laughs> and it's the bloody, it's the dwarf variety. I don't know. Anyway, we we've, we've got them all now. I cleared that bed. We'll come back to that bed tomorrow and uh, do something with it. Last one, there we go. So we've got a bag of them miniature corn there. There's a result. Who would have believed it? I was gonna give them all to the chickens and that's what I have been doing. <sighs> Good news. Buttercups are keeping out of the way. She's learning. So yeah, we got uh, got a nice some nice corn there. It's all gone now. The girls love it. I hate corn. The only good corn's on the end of an hook fishing for carp or you know bream or something like that. Uh, I, it's too sweet for me. I mean, the only thing I like sweet is uh, Bonville chocolate and um, the Cadbury's all nut bar. You know the one with the um, hazelnuts in, not with the raisins, just the hazelnuts. I mean, that's that, they're my that's what I really like them. But that's the only sweet thing uh, I'll eat. To be quite honest with you. Anyway, um, yeah, they they woofed them down. They've all gone. Maybe a couple left in the freezer, fridge, not in the fridge, freezer in the fridge. Well, they won't be there. If they was there last night, they won't be there tonight. I tell you, because they absolutely adore them. So we ended up with a um, with a, an empty bed, and uh, I'm not one for like leaving beds empty. Now we we put about five six buckets of uh, chicken manure in that bed. Not in that bed, bed not what four or five months four months ago or so uh, so it didn't need any more but I added a bit of blood fish and bone uh, anyway um, I got more more elephant garlic there so I decided to put the elephant garlic in um, now we've already done one lot of elephant garlic so I'm slightly going to do this put these elephant gar garlic in slightly different um, you're going to see the, how we're going to put them in uh, and um, you're going to see me um, doing that right now. Well guys, um, today I'm going to put the last of the elephant, well not the last of the elephant garlic, but I'm going to put another bed of elephant garlic in. I did the other one a few, about a week or so ago, and um, I've got another, I think there's 48 there, and I wondered how long it would be. Never mind, shh, be quiet and videoing, put the cups behind me. So, as you can see, we've got 48 in, 
and uh, I've got me, me oh, I don't, don't, don't think I need this uh, plug tool here we'll see what happens I'm gonna I won't be using new compost this is brilliant compost to start off with I'm busy I'll start bloody video again with you what are you there she is whining. I'm trying to do a I'm trying to do a video here of this. And she's whining. So this might not go as as to plan. But uh, once I've uh, put them in, then I'm going to put a net over them to keep bugger lugs off and um, forget about them until about May next year and then harvest them. Anyway, what's she doing now? <laughs> yep. Working with animals. What did he say? Don't work with animals and children. Good God, they're not wrong. Right, let's crack on. If we have to, I'll speed the camera up. Um, just move these keys out of my pocket, they drive me nuts. Look at that lot. I've got a new net here, but uh, it's not the one I wanted. So, see if it's any good. Actually, no, it's not. Well, that's no bloody good, is it? Oh dear. Looks like I'm going to have to go and get another net. Yeah, I think that one's for putting uh, peas up. Unbelievable. and bean net. Well that sucks. Right, we'll I'll be back. On for the time being. It's like three times the size of the bed guys and uh, yeah I need to find the smaller nets. I don't know where they are but uh, yeah that one's like three times the size, three times the length and, and three times the width but we've got it over here for the time being. If I don't cover it what will happen is um, the foxes and cats are, are dig down and uh, dig the garlic up. So yeah, we covered this one. I will replace this this um, net very shortly. But uh, anything goes on there, it's not going to get out. Anyway, jobs are good. And last of the elephant garlic's in now. Well, what I'm going to be planting anyway. Anyway, uh, I've put a net on them. That net's too big. I need to get a new net. So I'll be getting a new net in the next episode. That's for sure. And that means a trip up to the garden centre, so I don't know what I'm going to come back from the garden centre with. Every time I go there, it costs me a fortune. <laughs> Can't resist it. But, um, yeah, um, so we've we've got the elephant garlic in. I think we've got a total, we've got 48 in there, we've got 65 in the other one. So we've got over 100 and, nearly 113, maybe 120 elephant garlic. And then we've got all the um, solent and porcelain white. I will be doing a, a, a tour shortly, so you're going to see how well that's growing. Um, I've been watching a few people growing this. Oh, look at me elephant garlic. Uh, look at me garlic now. Look how big it is. 
it's this big guys <laughs> at the moment so by the time you see the video it'll be even bigger um, that's a porcelain and solar white anyway I've got one more clip to do I was I'm, I'm gonna do some bra beans and uh, we're going with these miniature um, Sutton dwarf beans that's all right on and make sure that I realize that the dwarf you can end up ripping them out thinking they're not growing very well so um, I've got a few pots in the, the front green now so I'm gonna show him actually I was distracted bloody camera position wasn't very good and buttercup was driving me nuts she's fast asleep on my leg now but she's keeping my legs warm so I'm not really minded so anyway I'm going to show you doing these bra beans in the front greenhouse now we're using clover multi-purpose compost it was a warm day the sun did come out <coughs> it was yesterday however today it's overcast it was raining earlier this morning we got intermittent showers all this week we got sun in the middle of it it, I reckon by the end of the week we're going to have snow so you know it's one of them things but uh, it won't stop the, the garlic from growing or the onions or anything else on the plot which is out there now but um, yeah we're going into the front greenhouse now I'm going to show me doing these uh, I think we did 16 pots we put three seeds in each pot but the pots are big pots don't you, you can't see it here guys but buttercup <laughs> she's sat in the plant pot just down here I'm just uh topping all these planters up here um, and all these pots what I'm going to do is uh, be putting um, some runner beans in not uh, not runner beans bra beans sorry and uh, there's a lot of uh, loom in this or loam sorry um, which will retain the moisture and uh, like I say we're putting bra beans in so it's uh, you know the big beans so you know these bits here what you're looking at here they're not you know it's not the best you won't you won't put your seed what are you doing you here she is fortunately she's keeping out of the way at the moment unless she jumps up there then she will be in the blooming way uh, that's I just uh, I'm gonna put be putting three beans per per pot in here. I normally would use toilet rolls, but uh, yeah, for this exercise, I'm just gonna put them straight into these pots because we've got them here. Level this out. Put me board back, bring them over. Right, um, me dibber, which one we're going to use? So, I'll probably put, like I say, I'm going to put three in here, like that. Normally I would just put one in, but um, you know, the reason why I'm putting three in is because the the you never know we might not get any germination at all. You can always uh, get rid of the other two. If the the all three of them come up. You can you, know, you can just get rid of them. Anyway, we're doing these Sutton seed uh, 20, 2022 The you know use by date so what we'll do I'll be checking the seeds as I'm putting them in making sure they're okay right, so let's have a look at the seeds these are the seeds in question and uh, like I say just no rhyme or reason, just drop them in the holes. I'm going to do a few trays of them. I'll do 16 like this. So there'll be a, a total of uh, 
we'll do 16 of these Forty-eight. I'm just trying to just trying to figure out how many how many trays there were. Hang on, sixteen, thirty-two, forty-eight. Yeah. I'm losing where I'm putting my blooming seeds there. Might end up with one of these not getting put in. I'm putting the bigger seeds in. And these seeds are really every one of them are fine actually. Anyway, where's that bag? What I'm going to do now, give them a little bit of a water on each seed. It's a lovely warm day today, even though it's a, a winter's day. But as always, to kick the seeds off, they do need water on them. And uh, I always make sure the seeds get water. And then Gently cover the soil over it. That's they're all done. Now it's just a matter of pushing them all down. It won't be long before you start to see these coming up. If you want, you could put them in a cold frame, but I wouldn't if I was you because you want them to hard enough. You, know, you can put them straight out. So anyway, we've got one more, one more to do. So I'm not going to bore you to death, but uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Well, we're putting three to a pot, and um, we'll soon get these. We'll get these out when the when the when we start to only you know, get to about three four inches. I'll put me start to get my frame ready for them as well, so we grow them up a frame as well. In fact, you could put all, all three of them around the round each cane, it doesn't really matter. They're a dwarf variety, so anyway. I said I'm just gonna continue doing this. This is third seed first seed sowing I've done for a, a bit this. Yeah, first seed sowing, bloody hell. I'm I'm doing them about two inches deep as well yeah the way I can hear an helicopter coming over right might have to open another packet here we'll see Difficult. Yep, we're going to have to open another packet. What I'll do with these as well, um, I'll stick these into the community room and let someone else have them. And all fingers and thumbs. Oh, these some of the I might take some of these smaller seeds out, stick some of these bigger ones in. Yeah, you want to always use your bigger seeds if you've got them. Push all these in. There we go. Right, put these back in the packet. Give them someone else. Always nice to give. And again, I'm doing making sure the seeds get wet. It's all important. Get them start them off germinating. Obviously, they need moisture to get them started. Do yourself a favour, though, guys. Make sure the water has been in the greenhouse for uh, 
a couple of days and um, when you do your seed sowings try and do them on a sunny day even if it's in the middle of winter try and do them on a sunny day make sure your seeds are warm and uh, you can't go wrong I'm not going to put a label in them because these are probably the only ones, only things I'm going to be growing at the moment in here. Just push all the seeds down. These will be up in no time. So I'm just going to stick them in a quiet place in the greenhouse. In fact, I might stick them in the in the middle greenhouse. Oh, I was saying that to do that. We're pushing as luck with Buttercup. And she's uh, she's done one. She was here a minute ago. Anyway, these are me, me Sutton dwarf beans. Oh, there's a seed there. Oh, at least not want not put that in there as well with the others. In fact, what I can do. Leave that in there like that. Now I know what the well, that, what that one is. Right on to the next. So there we go. Um, we've got got some um, broad beans in. I will be putting the um, the canes out shortly. Uh, I think what we're going to do is take the the potatoes that are in the buckets. There's only a few potatoes left in them buckets. So and they're starting to go. They're starting to germinate. They actually got leaves on them. So. Uh, I think they're going to be useless, but we have got a load of um, potatoes in the shed which I've, uh, I've harvested and banged up, so I've got plenty of potatoes and onions as well. All the onions are in, still in there. I've um, got them in net bags, so I'll be taking some of them home shortly as well. But yeah, we're going to empty them buckets and we're going to put the um, we're going to put the the pea fra or the bean frame where the buckets are. So. Yeah, we <clears throat> that's all to come. So um, I'm going to head off now and see if I can get a net for this um, this elephant garlic. I know I'm going to spend a fortune when I get in the garden centres. What did you see, babes? What spooked you? Bloody squirrel out there! <laughs> trouble is she doesn't like eating squirrels she likes the rats and the mice but not the squirrels anyway as you can see she has been on my knee all the way she's alive by the way guys aren't you hey eh? you are alive just let everyone everyone see you're alive because you think you might be dead on me knee like that bloody shipwreck cat in the um, front greenhouse right, well as you saw there she's she doesn't leave me side when I'm sat down when, I, when I'm stood up I get a break from her, um, but at the moment she's really comfortable on my knee. Hey, she's keeping my legs warm. That's a, it's like a little lap dog. Speaking of dogs, Darcy says, "Hey, Dad," says in, a, in about two weeks' time. So we're getting a shit poo. What? You're getting a shit poo? Says you're taking the Michael out, mate. So what's the hell's a shit poo? Says. It's a cross between a Shih Tzu and a Poodle. I said, a Shih Tzu? I said, seriously, you're having me on? I said, no, that's what they're called. I said, I don't believe you. Anyway, she said, well, there it is, Dad. And at the moment, I think it's about seven weeks old. And <laughs> they've got to get it in, a, in another week or two and bring it home. I wonder what all these parcels, what kept on arriving. Bloody... I didn't know what was in them until um, until she showed me this picture. So it looks like we're getting a, a ship poo. Um, I won't, but I don't think I'll be bringing it on the allotments. Uh, however, when they get bored of it, it looks like I'm going to know knowing my luck. I'll be the one who gets stuck with it. But um, they're adamant that she's going to look after it. She loves, you know, she's always wanted one, which she's true. And she's a big daft softy like me, so. Yeah, I might not even get a smelling where she, where this thing's concerned, but I'm sure Buttercup won't like it. So we're definitely not going to um, introduce a pair of them to, to each other. Well, not for a long time anyway. But as you can see, Buttercup here, 
Um, she's my little um, lap dog. <laughs> yeah, so I said to her how much it's going to cost. She said, oh, it's Dad, you don't want to know. Anyway, I looked up how much, they're gonna, how much these things cost. They run into thousands. Absolute barn pots, both of my daughters. But anyway, yeah, so I've looks like I've got another bloody animal to look after. Yeah, including you. Right, anyway, on to the next. Um, next week, or next episode, <coughs> I just noticed um, something's arrived at the top of the allotment, so um, it might be a surprise uh, for you in the next episode. <laughs> and, uh, bloody hell, look, wood pigeons have got bloody all sorts of things here. Uh, it's, like, it's like an animal bloody farm. And you're sat I'm in here, you should be chasing that wood that bloody wood pigeon there, you should be chasing that thing away. Not kidding, these wood pigeons are like big big as ducks. Bloody Maggie, she's uh she's there too. Anyway, I'm getting distracted now, so next episode Um Don't be surprised if uh you see me working with the chickens I'll say no more until next time thanks for watching guys thanks uh, from me and uh, Buttercup goodbye for now you're not going to say wow 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 stop purring all you should do is purring here guys have I got the microphone here you can hear her purring eh? she likes her chinny chin chin being tickled now if you did that with another cat she'd probably sink your teeth into your hand <laughs> <laughs> Not this one. I've never been clawed. Never, 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 never. Any, she's never bit me. Never clawed me. And all the time I've known her. Yeah. Look at it out there. The bloody squiddle as well there. And you're sat on my knee. So I've got a bloody wood pigeon and I've got a squiddle and I've got Maggie. What are a lot of them out here? I'll swing the camera around. You don't make. Not wagging your tail, I can see you wagging your tail. Alright. Right. I don't know if you can see out the window there. Well uh, yeah, bloody squirrels just run down the run down the path. Right next to it on the end of the path so bloody there's a wood well it's not facing the right way. So there's a wood pigeon there on the end of the path. Um bloody squirrels just run down the path. I've got Maggie over here and I've got a load of um, got a little cold tits and uh, great tits and blue tits coming to the feeders. And this thing here, is, swing the camera back round. Oops. And this thing is sat on my knee, aren't you? Right, I, can I get up now? She's got her arms like that, guys. I'm not kidding you. Oh, God. Yeah, she's got them tucked in like that. At least you're not digging the claws in. Well, she actually don't dig the claws. What she does, she goes like that. With her feet on me knee, massaging my leg. Oh, little robin out there too. I wonder if that, um... Oh, what do you call him? Uh, buzzard got away. <laughs> He's been mobbed in the tree by about 15, 16 bloody magpies before. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of a uh, lot of um, birds of prey on this allotment. I'm sure we'll we'll get to see one or two of them very soon. Anyway, let's uh, let's get 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 this video up. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Leave a comment below. Uh, it's getting close to Christmas, and that, the reason why I know that is because uh, my birthday's tomorrow, 50 December, and I'm 21 again. <laughs> for about the 40th time well nearly 40th time anyway right anyway on to the next